This is section 46 of Mark Twain's Speeches. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Dinner to Whitelaw Reed by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at the dinner in honor of Ambassador Reed, given by the Pilgrims Club of New York on February 19, 1908. I am very proud to respond to this toast as it recalls the proudest day of my life. The delightful hospitality shown me at the time of my visit to Oxford I shall cherish until I die. In that long and distinguished career of mine I value that degree above all other honors. When the ship landed even the stevedores gathered on the shore and gave an English cheer. Nothing could surpass in my life the pleasure of those four weeks. No one could pass by me without taking my hand, even the policemen. I've been in all the principal capitals of Christendom in my life, and have always been an object of interest to policemen. Sometimes there was suspicion in their eyes, but not always. With their puissant hand they would hold up the commerce of the world to let me pass. I noticed in the papers this afternoon a dispatch from Washington, saying that Congress would immediately pass a bill restoring to our gold coinage the motto, In God We Trust. I'm glad of that. I'm glad of that. I was troubled when that motto was removed. Sure enough, the prosperities of the whole nation went down in a heap when we ceased to trust in God in that conspicuously advertised way. I knew there would be trouble, and if Pierpont Morgan hadn't stepped in, Bishop Lawrence may now add to his message to the old country that we are now trusting in God again, so we can discharge Mr. Morgan from his office with honor. Mr. Reed said an hour or so ago something about my ruining my activities last summer. They are not ruined. They are renewed. I am stronger now, much stronger. I suppose that the spiritual uplift I received increased my physical power more than anything I ever had before. I was dancing last night at twelve thirty o'clock. Mr. Choate has mentioned Mr. Reed's predecessors. Mr. Choate's head is full of history, and some of it is true, too. I enjoyed hearing him tell about the list of the men who had the place before he did. He mentioned a long list of those predecessors, people I never heard of before, and elected five of them to the presidency by his own vote. I'm glad and proud to find Mr. Reed in that high position, because he didn't look it when I knew him forty years ago. I was talking to Reed the other day, and he showed me my autograph on an old paper twenty years old. I didn't know I had an autograph twenty years ago. Nobody ever asked me for it. I remember a dinner I had long ago with Whitelaw Reed and John Hay at Reed's expense. I had another last summer when I was in London at the embassy that choked blackguards so. I'd like to live there. Some people say they couldn't live on the salary, but I could live on the salary and the nation together. Some of us don't appreciate what this country can do. There's John Hay, Reed, Choate, and me. This is the only country in the world where youth, talent, and energy can reach such heights. It shows what we could do without means, and what people can do with talent and energy when they find it in people like us. When I first came to New York, they were all struggling young men, and I am glad to see that they have got on in the world. I knew John Hay when I had no white hairs in my head, and more hair than Reed has now. Those were days of joy and hope. Reed and Hay were on the staff of the Tribune. I went there once in that old building, and I looked all around, and I finally found a door ajar and looked in. 
It wasn't Reed or Hay there, but it was Horace Greeley. Those were in the days when Horace Greeley was a king. That was the first time I ever saw him, and the last. I was admiring him when he stopped and seemed to realize that there was a fine presence there somewhere. He tried to smile, but he was out of smiles. He looked at me a moment and said, "'What in H do you want?' He began with that word H. That's a long word and a profane word. I don't remember what the word was now, but I recognized the power of it. I had never used that language myself, but at that moment I was converted. It has been a great refuge for me in time of trouble. If a man doesn't know that language, he can't express himself on strenuous occasions. When you have that word at your command, let trouble come. But later, hey rose, and you know what summit Whitelaw Reed has reached, and you see me. Those two men have regulated troubles of nations and conferred peace upon mankind. And in my humble way, of which I am quite vain, I was the principal moral force in all those great international movements. These great men illustrated what I say. Look at us, great people. We all come from the dregs of society. That's what can be done in this country. That's what this country does for you. Choate here, he hasn't got anything to say, but he says it just the same, and he can do it so felicitously, too. I said long ago he was the handsomest man America ever produced. May the progress of civilization always rest on such distinguished men as it has in the past. End of Dinner to Whitelaw Reed by Mark Twain Read by John Greenman